This is Becca Salamon for Southern Horse Talk and I am on location in Montevallo, Alabama at Spring Creek Prop Farms and I'm sitting here with a, a very artistic and creative person all the way from Brooklyn, New York, originally from Birmingham. Her name is Whitney Hamilton. Welcome Whitney. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to be here talking to you today. I'm a little bit out of breath because I just ran to my truck. <laughs> so I, I found out about you from a friend of mine, Libby Shackelford with Care Celebrates Farm. And she was having her horses be part of your film. And so we came out maybe a week or so ago and watched a filming. So tell us a little bit about all of that and how you put a film together and, and how it's made. Wow, okay. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a little bit about what the, f the film is about, and it's about a woman who takes on her dead brother's identity in order to fight and survive in the Confederate ranks of the Civil War. And she ends up um, marrying a widow to help her save her farm, and then they, they fall in love. And the woman continues to live as a man so that they can live peacefully on this farm. And that is based on your book that you wrote called Firefly, is that right? Yes, correct. Uh, loosely based. Um, and there were over 400 women that fought on both sides of the Civil War. And, and today, I think people have found that they estimate about 700 women fought disguised as men on both sides. So th this is historically correct. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, when, when I met you, um, you didn't look like you look today. <laughs> You were, you were dressed, you know, in character, and you had the the, you know, the mustache and the beard. So how do you get all that put together for filming? Um, just the makeup type stuff? Yeah. Um, well, I, I go on to a site. Well, there's a shop in New York that I go to, Alcone, and But you can get the stuff on online. And what it is is it's crepe hair, and I get it the same color as my hair. And I use uh, medical adhesive for the mustache and the beard, and I hand lay it. And then I use uh, stipple paste to put the, the stubble on. And I, I fool quite a few people, yeah. especially at reenactments. Yeah, you really do. And that's one thing that you actually participate in as a hobby is reenactments, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, in doing research, I did a prequel to this film called My Brother's War, which was about we shot about 13 years ago. And in doing my research, I fell in with a group, the Alabama Division of Reenactors. And um, in doing that research, they were like, hey, do you ride horses? And I said, yeah, I ride horses. <laughs> so I became part of the uh, Six Alabama Cavalry. And we ride um, all different kinds of horses, gated horses, quarter horses. They're all battle ready. We shoot pistols, we shoot rifles, we do battle formations like War Horse, the movie War Horse, right. the same battle formations. That's amazing. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of those reenactments at um, Tannehill and places like that. And in fact, bringing up Tannehill, I thought I saw that that was in one of the clips. Did you film out there as well? Yes, we did right there at the furnace. Yeah, yeah that you, you know, it's, it's just so noticeable. I'm like, that's definitely Tannehill right, <laughs> when you exactly. see it. So um, let's let's go back a little bit and talk about your you know your background your history you you did grow up in Birmingham you spent some time in New Orleans is that right yes, and then you ended up in New York because of you know um, being an artist and filmmaking and stuff so tell us how your career has gone so far um, it's gone pretty well I mean I've 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 been fortunate enough to do what I want to do um, I I'm a painter I'm an actor writer director and I've just for for many years for 20 years have been able to do what I want to do. Um, I have two previous feature films out, um, My Brother's War and A Rogue in Londinium, um, that have made the f festival circuit. And then Union will is a much bigger film, wider in scope, more epic. So hopefully yeah. that'll be out in theaters. Wow, yeah. that, that's great. So, so far, um, and actually all of it's kind of independent filmmaking? Absolutely, yeah. So far, um, you know, we've used, used our own resources, and we're, we're still looking for some financing and um, donations. We're 100% fully tax-deductible and fiscally sponsored on the site. If you want to help us out, you can donate to us, or you can contact me and talk about, you know, investing. Okay. And where would people need to go to make a donation? Uh, it's uh, Fractured Atlas. It's right on the, side, uh, on the site. It's uh, union-movie.com. Okay. So, um... When you decide to make films, what inspired you? Why this genre? Why this part of history? Um, it had been written as a play first, and what inspired the play was Joan of Arc. 
And I thought, how could, how would that be translated into a uniquely American story? And when I started to do the research, that's when I found out that women did fight disguised as men. And I thought, wow, I just kind of stumbled upon it. And that, you know, once you scratch the surface of the U.S. Civil War, it, there's so yes. much information <laughs> there. So, and I'm from the South, so it, it resonates. There you go. So um, fem female soldiers, that's kind of a theme, 19th century theme that, that comes through. Um, did females do this for any particular reason? Was it to maybe protect their farm and their land or uh, to, to not be raped by other soldiers? Why did they pretend to be men? Correct. Um, I think um, f for the women who were in the South, uh, they were burned out. Their husbands were killed, brothers were killed, and the only other alternative was to become a soiled dove, which was a hooker back then, um, in order to escape being molested, raped, and starving to death. They they fell into the ranks, and and many of them passed. Now for the North, some of the same reasons, um, but a lot of women were stuck on a farm and and just craved adventure, or they wanted to be close to their husband or their brother that had did. Uh, join the ranks. Okay, and then also I was reading on, uh, I guess, one of the sites or maybe a review about the invisibility of the 19th century queer lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So how, why did you want to explore that um, as part of this? Um, I, I, I've always been fascinated with gender, and I, I never, you know, once again, I when I started to research this person who decided to, you know, be, become transgendered in a way um, by putting on uh, male clothes and, and assuming a male identity. I didn't realize, um, ha you know, these Boston marriages and the these female husbands. And also what I find really fascinating is that most indigenous cultures recognize four genders and had no judgment whatsoever about that and I and I thought that was refreshing and new and I wanted to to illuminate that part well yeah it's fascinating and you know when you look at the clips on the site it's it's a very powerful and moving piece I see your allergies are acting up there she, she's not crying over the movie okay she's got allergies <laughs> and we're sitting out here in this field <laughs> so um you know, you came here to, to film it, but are you filming in other locations across the country? Uh, we're, we're filming most, almost 100% of it in, um, in Alabama. We've, we've shot some B-roll in, in Asheville, North Carolina, but for the most part, we've, we've shot in Mobile, we've shot at Selma, we've shot um, at Tannehill. We've sh we're, we've, one of our other locations is in Asheville, um, Alabama, Oneonta. We want to shoot at Horsepins 40. Um, yeah, we're, we're all over the state in Montevallo, of course. Yeah, so you're showcasing the state of Alabama, and we like that. Yeah. So <laughs> are you working with the, the Alabama Film Office? I, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but are you working with them? They've been so incredibly helpful in terms of finding locations and connecting me with the people who have these locations. Um, yeah, they're great. That's awesome. So, um, so when you're going out and, and you're filming a scene, how do you... Um, how do you get into that? I mean, you, you walk from, you know, the, the street in a car, and then you're back in 19th century. How do you transfer to that? Wow. Um, I think it's just, I guess, the re, re, you know, being an actor, just doing, doing the work as an actor as well, uh, as experiencing um, what it's like as a reenactor, because it, that's as close as you can come to... To tr time travel you know you learn what you have to do in order to survive and and all the rules of the battlefield and it's you know I don't know if past life memories come up or what it is but it just it, it resonates yeah and we, we were talking the other day when we were filming uh, about our favorite movies and um, you know it, it seems like you can get into character when you're filming and just really become part of it and you start living that character do you find that yeah sometimes um <clears throat> on certain scenes i'll be so into it i'll for i'll forget when i step back out <clears throat> i won't remember it because i've it feels like i've channeled something else yeah and, and and also i was looking at your um your bio and some of your your um your reels on there and you are, are very good at doing different 
styles of, of voices you know <laughs> southern style or uh, like a character type style right, sure. so could, could you give um, people a little sample of that what well, do us do a I don't know, do a southern one <laughs> A southern accent. Yeah. I, it's kind of just inherent. <laughs> um, I don't know. I can talk like Henry like that, sort of, you know, kind of like that. Or I can, you know, sort of, I'm, now I'm really doing a bad English accent. <laughs> like I can do uh, a bit of an Irish brogue there, you know, where, you're, you know, the Irish, they love the horses as well, you know, the Connemara ponies and such. Exactly. Now, how did you learn to do all that? Was it just something that you did growing up, or did you actually go to school to learn that? I, I didn't learn accents. I think um, I think just being um, observant and and really listening. I, I, f I really feel that the the southern accent is very very close to an Irish accent. It's yeah. Irish and and English, and that's why the English do Southerners so well because it's it's the same. There's the same. There's a similar melody to it. Okay. Now you mentioned horses again, and that's really what we're all about with Southern Horse Talk. So, what is it like to film with horses on set, and what kind of considerations do you have to take because they are, you know, animals with their own mind? <laughs> sure. Um, insurance. <laughs> <laughs> insurance always um and uh, you know just just reenacting with uh people uh in the alabama division of reenactors you, you know some people would say hey you could ride my horse but you know you get kind of get a feeling of the the owner and the horse and what and sometimes it just isn't a right a good fit and not a right man that and that's where you know you're intuition says uh, safety first I'm not going to get on that horse mm -hmm. um, but I, th I think just listening to your intuition and really being connected to the animal especially when when you're on on it right yeah yeah exactly now um, you know I was only involved with that one filming scene where you had uh, Libby's horses out here but do you have lots of horses in the movie oh yeah we have uh, the cavalry's in the movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where did you film the the uh, fight scenes at Tannehill, okay. yeah, the you, the battle scene, the right. skirmish, yeah, and then we we've also gone to um, these past four years uh, have been the 150th anniversary of some of the major battles. So we went to Gettysburg, we went to Shiloh, we went to the 150th, the Selma, we went to the 150th battle of uh, Mobile Bay, and okay. uh, and because I know those people, I was allowed to to embed a camera and get some of that those wider shots where it really does look like there's thousands of yeah. people with horses and cannons on the battlefield that's fascinating so you it's been going on for four years the filming yeah well um the no the 150th anniversaries um we started filming in in 2013 that's when we we shot the scenes at Tannehill, and um just because it's it's hard to find financing for independent films these days we've had to do it in bits and pieces and so hopefully next spring we'll be able to finish up yeah, and that's another thing I've been wondering about is when you have to film it in bits and pieces and you said that the other day that you'd be coming back because of the seasons mm -hmm. how do you ensure that everything's the same in the same scene you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> I pray a lot <laughs> um and because everything is digital, we go back and I just, I own, you know, most of the props and all of the costumes. And I just make sure that I have everything safely organized so that we, when we do come back, nothing has changed. Okay. Yeah. All right. L tell us a little bit about the, um, the characters in the movie and who's, who's playing the characters. Um, I play Henry Keeler a.k.a. Grace, who has left her home because it's been burned and all of her family has been killed and assumed her brother Henry's identity. Um, and Virginia Newcomb plays Virginia Clazing, who's the widow who's lost her child and lost her husband. And her sister and brother-in-law want to sell off her farm and marry her off to an old codger, and she won't have any of that. And I show up just in the nick of time and she says i got a great idea let's get married and oh okay well yeah sure why not <laughs> but then they actually you know, develop feelings for each other and fall in love Absolutely. is that right yeah so so that's um i guess non-traditional right how do you think that's going to be accepted and, and viewed when the film comes out 
Um, I I hope it will be embraced because I really feel like love is genderless. I mean, when you when you talk about real true soulmate type of love, love is love is love. Yes. Yeah. Well, you really get that when you look at the clips online. You really get love is love. So so uh, females in the 19th century that were you know serving as soldiers, um, they did a lot of this because they had lost their their brothers, their their fathers, their husbands. And what was the after effect of that from the war? Um, there were I mean, a lot of women because a fifth of the U.S. population died during the Civil War, which is a, a lot, and most of them were were men. And and the men that did come back were incapacitated and wounded and and had PTSD and um, a lot couldn't function. And and so a lot of these women took on the task of managing and and working these farms them just by themselves and that in turn those women were are responsible for the beginning of this the suffragette movement and the 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 right to vote for all women here in the u.s yeah that, that's amazing now um as you film this and uh, you know maybe you just have a, a love of um american history did you learn all this by filming it or did you already know uh, no, I, it was all through research and just digging to find out. Um, there's awesome. there's definitely a Native American thread through the film with the Cherokee. So how does that um, feed into the Civil War? Um, well, the Eastern Band Cherokee um, hid out, and a lot of them hid out in the mountains um, to avoid being removed. You know, the Trail of Tears was in 1838. And by the time the, the Civil War came around, the Eastern Band uh, Cherokee um, kind of became home guard uh, and sided with the Confederacy so, because the, the Federal Army removed them, so they were going to side with the Confederacy. Um, but anyway, um, in, in our story, they're hiding up in the mountains, and they're neighbors with Virginia and some of the other white settlers. And because it was such a, a austere time, they helped each other. And the Indians help Virginia find Henry and Henry to find Virginia because they know that Henry is a two-spirit and a two-spirit is someone that has both genders. Interesting. So so is that a term that they that really is a, a real term, two-spirit? It is a it's a modern term to to address native culture and the LGBT community. Um, there were other words for it, but they've now become derogatory derogatory in use. Um, so so the 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 common term is now two spirit. So uh, the film is, is still being made, and it's um, set to release in 2016. Is that right? Uh, well, we'll probably finish shooting in 2016. Hopefully, release by the end, the very end of 2016, or the beginning of 2017. Okay. And where is it going to be released? Uh, well, we hope to take it on the festival circuit with our eye on Cannes in Berlin, um, and then from there, we hope to have uh, you know an art house release here. In, in the U.S. Love to show it at the Alabama Theater. I'm talking to the people at the Sidewalk Film Festival and hopefully they'll help us with that as well. Now, um, Southern Horse Talk just got finished working with um, Ben Masters and the Unbranded movie, oh, okay. which was an independent film. And I, I did a screening for that here in Birmingham through tug.com. And I'm not sure if you know about that, but that would be a great way to get people to uh, host screenings all over the country. That's, that is a great idea, and I have heard about Tug, and yes, definitely, I'll put that on my schedule. List of things to do. List of things to do, yeah, for sure. So is there a take-home message you want to give to the horse folks that are listening? <clears throat> I love horses. <laughs> I always have. Um, I, I, they were such an integral part in, in, the, in, 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 in all of history, but also the Civil War, you know, with the cavalry. And the cavalry... Um, with Stonewall Jackson and 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 uh, they they just were these master uh, strategists and I I think um, a lot of times that is what kind of elongated the Civil War was because they were such master strategists. So um, when people want to get information about this, where should they best go to find it? Well, you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, at the site, union-movie.com. Um, yeah. And your name is Whitney Hamilton. And do you have a personal um, website or blog? Uh, yeah, whitneyhamilton.com. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing today with Southern Horse Talk. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, All right. For more information, you can go to alabamahorsetalk.com and southernhorsetalk.com. And please join the conversation on Southern Horse Talk Facebook group. This is Becca Salomon with Southern Horse Talk, and I am on location in Montevallo, Alabama with Lynn Ward. And we're standing here in a original cabin from 1821, is that right? 1821. And we're on, uh, we're at Spring Creek Prop Farms. This is his business and he rents out um, the land, the buildings on it, and the props to make movies and videos and all sorts of things. Lynn, tell us a little bit about how you got started with this. I've always kind of acquired things, so I'm kind of the keeper of the family things. Everything in the house is either my great-grandparents, my grandparents, or my parents. And so, uh, we started, I started doing community theater and then progressed to films and then I did, a, I was cast and did some stunt work for Union when Whitney first started shooting Union and uh, she and I got to talking and she needed somewhere to shoot so she came down and looked and you know this is exactly what she was looking for. So that's how we got, got started with, with the film Union. That's awesome. Well, you know, what other kind of clients do you have come through here? We have a, a we've had a, a web series called Blood Type Kevin Wayne. That's kind of a Vampire Diaries crossed with The Walking Dead scenario. So <laughs> that's they, exciting. <laughs> yeah, they filmed, filmed season one here, not in the house, but they used uh, some of the barns. They needed a laboratory and a humanoid camping area, you know, compound. So we did that. We've had uh, several music videos. Had one for Nick Nicholson, so song "Grandpa Still," which was shot on the front, in front of this house. And we had uh, two weeks ago Chelsea Wilde and from Birmingham. We shot her new, we shot a video for her new song "Fire," but we shot it in the in the swamp. And we've got two eight-foot brass chandeliers, and so we that's hung back in the swamp. And we did all kinds of built some lifts and stuff for her. So and we have a uh, Christmas time Terry Bruno with Photo Works in Montevallo will bring a uh, 19, I believe it's a 1957 red pickup and she takes Santa pictures where Santa's sitting in the back of the pickup and then you can either sit on the tailgate of the truck or sit in Santa's lap. Awesome. So That's she, unique. That's great. Yeah. So now you said that you work at Montevallo in the theater department, is that right? No. Uh, no. No. But when I met you, you were you were going down there for something at Montevallo. Yeah, right? we're uh, currently in rehearsals for War of the Worlds at Montevallo Main Street Players. Okay, all right. Well, I'm glad I got that straight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, since we're in here, do you want to just kind of give us a little tour and yeah. tell us about the rooms as we go? Yeah. The original where we're standing right now originally was a dog trot. The house was uh, four rooms. The rooms are 18 feet square. So uh, got two rooms downstairs, two rooms upstairs. Okay, so, I'll just follow you. All right. So this was kind of the, I guess this would have been like the living area here because the original staircase to go upstairs is in here. And I'm thinking probably they would sleep upstairs. This would be like their living room, cooking area. Oh. When uh, Whitney's here, we empty the room out and she puts all of her period 1860s things in. So is you, you <clears throat> excuse me, you actually live here, so your your life is kind of fluid depending on what people need to do with this, this cabin. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a TV room <clears throat> porch in the back, glassed in area, and I kind of, I get thrown out of my bedroom and I kind of get pushed back there. Because <laughs> when they come in to film, there's so many people it takes to, to do a film. And so you got so much equipment and stuff, so they need so much room. So, you know, they'll kind of, they'll pretty much take over the whole house when they come in to film, which is fine. So I don't have any problem with that. <laughs> and, and what about there? Is that the kitchen back there? Or? Yeah, this is, uh, this would have been, this was the back of the house here. Okay. So this is a, this probably is more, a dining room. More modern area that was yeah. added on. Okay. Yep. All right, and let me go back over this way and we will look at the other room. So this is the oldest house in Shelby County and it's 
the original property was three federal land grants signed by President Monroe for 40 acres each, and all of the original properties were still with the house. So it may be one of the only properties in the whole state, or maybe in the southeast, that has all of its original property with the house back to 1821. Wow, that's amazing. So, Unique and special. Yeah. So this is a, currently a bedroom. Like I said, all of the rooms are 18 by 18. They're really big, so. Yeah, is, is this your family's farm, or how did you acquire this? Oh, my mother and daddy bought it back in 1971, and they renovated the house, and we moved in uh, back in 1972. And then I uh, started farming in, like, 1976. I had cattle and hay and whatever else I could do to make equipment payments and survive on, on the farm. and. In the early 80s, I bought the property from my parents, except for the house, and I believe it was five acres or four acres. And then when my parents passed away, they always wanted the house to go back with the farm. So uh, that way the farm and the house was put back together once again. Awesome. So ha have you noticed over the years that more and more um, films are being made in Alabama? It seems like that's a trend. Yeah, there, there's more. There needs to be more. I, I read where the economic impact of the film industry in Alabama is like between four and five hundred million dollars. Wow. In Georgia, where I also work in other films, so I do, I've done a lot of work in Georgia, the economic impact of the film industry in Georgia is like eight billion dollars. Oh my goodness. So, you know, we got to catch up. <laughs> yeah. What Al what the difference is is Alabama caps what a filmmaker can, you know, the incentives. Georgia doesn't. So everybody goes to Georgia and spends, you know, money for craft services, renting, you know, motels, everything that goes with people living and working in an area and it just, you know, they Georgia may spend a dollar, but they probably get 10 twenty dollars back for that one dollar. So that state of Alabama really really needs to play some catch up because Alabama is such a diverse state. You know, we've got everything from the mountains in the north to the beach in the south and then everything in between. Yeah, I was about to say we have such great resources here. It seems a shame. Yeah. There's not more. So where can people go to find out more about your business? Uh, right now we're on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, Spring Creek Prop Farms. Go to our Facebook page, uh, a lot of our inventory is there, a lot of pictures of the house and the farms, you know, the locations are there, uh, our, all our contact information is there. We have a, we're having a, a web page developed, but it's not up yet. But, okay. So they can go to Facebook and like Spring Creek Prop Farms. Okay, and is there an uh, email or a phone number you want to share? Uh, all of the information is there. Okay. Uh, I can be... I can be reached at Spring Creek Farms at att.net or area code 205 296 Awesome. That's my cell number. Well, I appreciate you sharing today. And I should say one of the reasons that I'm talking to you is because we were going to be um, interviewing Whitney Hamilton, right. who's filming Union, and she had used some of the horses from uh, Carousel of Breeds, Libby Shackelford. Right. And so that's, that's why we're out here. I forgot to say that part. Okay. <laughs> but thanks for sharing today, Lynn. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for coming. All righty.